Hello, uh, welcome to our Lenten series on the saints. Uh, today we're going to begin with Saint Bernadette. Over these next six, seven weeks, we're going to, every Wednesday, post a little video on one of the saints. There are all sorts of saints. There's the saints of the ancient era, who, for some of whom we know very little about. There are saints from the modern day, the 20th century. Uh, about those we know a great deal. There are saints with legendary stories. There were saints who were great thinkers and theologians. There were saints who lived a life of pure prayer. There were saints who did great good works. So there's all sorts of interesting things to speak about. And these saints remind us that whatever, in whatever day and age they lived, in whatever place they lived, in whatever situation they faced, they were people who were extremely close to God, people who were striving to be very Christ-like, and they remind us that that's the way it is supposed to be. We're supposed to be people who grow ever closer to the Lord, then we are supposed to be people who try to live as Jesus did, and these saints are the heroes of our faith. So we pray to them, asking them for their intercession, and we look to them to set the good example for us on our journey through this world. So, as I mentioned earlier, the feast or the saint we celebrate today is Saint Bernadette. Now, Saint Bernadette was born in 1844 in uh, southern France in a place called Lourdes. She was a, a girl who was rather sickly. She was always in poor health. She suffered from cholera, I believe, in her early days, and uh, that affected the rest of her life. Uh, it weakened her terribly. But she was a fine young girl, the oldest of nine children, uh, living in a poor family. Uh, she was a girl of great prayerfulness. Well, one day, she and uh, her sister and one of her friends were out gathering wood. and. Uh, as she passed a grotto, or a very shallow cave, she saw a bright light in it, and she stopped. And she was the only one who could see it. And she saw this figure of a woman dressed in white. And she went back the next day, even though her sister and her friend couldn't see anything, she went back and she saw the figure again. And turned out it was an apparition of the Blessed Mother. Uh, she began to speak to the Blessed Mother, and the Blessed Mother began to speak to her. And so the Blessed Mother asked that she would come back and pray 20 days in a row, and she began to do that. Now, while all this was happening, uh, the story began to spread, and it, it caused difficulty. Uh, her people were thinking that she was doing this just to draw attention to herself. Uh, there was opposition from those in the church church, there was opposition from the civil authorities, they didn't understand what was happening. But she was having this communication uh, with the Blessed Mother. And she was told that uh, she was supposed to pray, and the world was supposed to pray, and do penance, and try to live in a Christ-like fashion. The uh, message was rather simple. Uh, she was asked to build a chapel on that site uh, to the Blessed Mother. And finally, towards the end, uh, she was told to dig a small hole, and she did, and water welled out of it, and uh, the water was clear. And that water became a pool, and the pool grew, and it became a place that people would go to for miraculous cures. So over those 20 days, uh, her faith was changed. She was given promises, and the one promise was that this life would not be easy for her, but the next life would be filled with joy, and that changed the rest of her life. As after all this ended, she uh, joined a convent and became a nun. Uh, she was always sickly, but she was somebody who did her best. She helped in the infirmary, she helped in the training of novices, and uh, as time went on, she developed tuberculosis, and uh, it affected her lungs and her bones, and it was very painful, and she spent a good chunk of the rest of her life in great pain. The interesting thing was, even though so many people had been cured uh, at, at Lourdes, uh, she did not share in that, but that didn't bother her because she knew she was 
God's instrument. She knew that she was one who was supposed to call attention to the Blessed Mother, and she knew that their life it was going to include some pain and some penance, and when it was all said and done, she was going to be living in eternal happiness. So she led a life that, even though it was difficult, was filled with a sense of joy and filled with a sense of hope. And so what we need to do as we remember somebody like St. Bernadette, we need to understand that, you know, God is with us, and ultimately that's what's most important. It doesn't mean life will always be easy, it doesn't mean our problems will magically disappear, but it means there's somebody we can count on for comfort and consolation, somebody we can count on for his grace and guidance, and somebody someday who will take us home to be with him forever. That's what gave her peace and comfort and joy in this life, and it needs to infect us too. Have a good day.